Hello, everybody. So um, we have been talking about psoriasiform diseases, and we talked about um, you know psoriasis and some atypical presentations of psoriasis. And you know, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. But uh, you know, I thought that let's talk about some other psoriasiform dermatoses, uh, you know, which can mimic psoriasis. So like psori psoriasiform um, entities, which are in the differential diagnosis of psoriasis. So uh, these entities include uh, Petrisis rubra pilaris, seborrheic dermatitis, and uh, necrolytic uh, psoriasiform dermatoses, which typically occur in patients with uh, nutritional and metabolic deficiencies. Uh, uh, you know, uh, there are other entities which present as solitary lesions, for example, uh, pale cell acanthoma, which uh, look like a solitary lesion of psoriasis under the microscope, but obviously, you know, clinically, it's got nothing to do with uh, psoriasis. So uh, uh, let's uh, go through these entities one by one. And the first entity which I'm going to be talking about today, the psoriasiform entity which tends to mimic psoriasis is Petrisis rubra pilaris, so PRP. Petrisis rubra pilaris by far is the closest mimicker of psoriasis. Now patients with both a PRP and a with psoriasis can present with erythroderma. And PRP, you know, can be a challenging uh, diagnosis, uh, especially when we are dealing with, you know, early lesions of psoriasis where psoriasis and PRP can mimic each other pretty much clinically. So, uh, you know, I think about Petrasis rubra pilaris, and I always teach the residents that this is a psoriasiform dermatosis with an intact granular cell layer and a very thick cornified layer. So, you know, we talked about psoriasis, and I mentioned that psor uh, psoriasis, you see loss of granular cell layer or diminution of granular cell layer, whereas in PRP, it's a psoriasiform dermatosis with an intact preserved granular cell layer, and the cornified layer is, is pretty thick. So um, the classic features of PRP include, again, the psoriasiform hyperplasia. So you can see psoriasiform epidermal acanthosis. You can see the nice bulbous sweetie ridges. You can again see some suprapathody thinning, some dilated vessels. So that's pretty much, you know, the psoriasis-like features. But you can see that unlike psoriasis, where you would typically see loss or diminution of granular cell layer, here the granular cell layer is pretty retained, and in some areas it's actually pretty thick. The other thing which actually stands out in this case is the cornified layer. So you can see that, uh, you know, as compared to the degree of acanthosis, there is marked hyperkeratosis and paracavatosis. You also see follicular plugging. So you can see these plugged hair follicles, follicular hyperkeratosis, with what is described as parafollicular paracavatosis. So you can see lipping of the follicular ostium with, with paracavatotic keratin layer on either side of the follicular ostium, which is parafollicular paracavatosis. These plugged follicles, follicular plugging, can also be seen clinically um, in these patients. So if psoriasiform hyperplasia and intact granular cell layer, follicular plugging, parafollicular paracavatosis, and a very thick cornified layer. Now, the pattern of cornification in PRP is pretty classic. It's what is described as alternating orthohyper and paracavatosis in a horizontal or a vertical array described as checkerboard pattern of cornification. Now, first of all, unlike in psoriasis, uh, where you get neutrophils in the cornified layer, uh, you do not typically get neutrophilic exocytosis in PRP. So this is, you know, you don't don't get neutrophils. Uh, but you can see this pattern of cornification. You can see uh, the checkerboard pattern, which to me is confluent hyperkeratosis and paracavatosis. So wherever you see the pattern of cornification, the paracavatosis and the orthohyperkeratosis is very intimately associated with one another. It kind of alternates both both in a horizontal and in a vertical array, which is described as a checkerboard pattern of cornification, which is uh, you know pretty pretty classic for Petrisis rubra pilaris. So you again see the intimately associated paracavatosis and the orthohyperkeratosis. Now, some of the atypical presentations of PRP can include a spongiosis. You can even have some uh, dermal eosinophils, and even areas of acantholysis, Grover's disease-like, have been described in PRP. So, in this case, you can see that there is some subtle acantholysis involving the granular cell layer. So, acantholysis can certainly be seen in PRP, and actually sometimes helps in supporting the diagnosis of PRP. So, you can see here some subtle acantholysis happening involving this hair follicle in a classic case of PRP. So that's not uncommon. 
So PRP can be pretty challenging, but you know, with the features that I talked about, you can definitely make a diagnosis of PRP. And you know, I'll show you some more cases where uh, you know we can talk about whether this is psoriasis or PRP. So hope you guys enjoyed this, uh, and we will talk about another case tomorrow. Thanks, and have a great day.